Hello and welcome to Excel Dashboard Templates.com. This is Steve Equals True. Please visit my blog at Excel Dashboard Templates.com where you're sure to learn the latest posts, tips, tricks, and techniques and learn everything about Excel. Okay, today I'm going to cover a music festival chart that a user wanted to see if we could make. And uh, this is what they would normally do they have uh, different bands on different stages uh, throughout the afternoon and they have a start and end time and they wanted to see visually a representation of how and where those bands are going to be um, in the uh, various music festival. So uh, what they've done in the past is they've had numbers up along the top and they've had the stage over on the left and then what they would do is they would highlight a number of cells they would go up and do merge and center um, and then from the merge and center they would type in the band's name and color it. But uh, they wanted to know is there a way to do this that's more automated instead of uh, what they were doing, which was if a band had to move, they had to unmerge the cells, move it over, merge it into another spot, and uh, just took a little bit more work, but uh, wanted to see is this something we could automate. So let's go ahead and check out what we've got here. What this is, is this is a conditional formatting chart, uh, almost a Gantt chart, because it's uh, bands or bars along different time axis. And so this is all just done with conditional formatting. So if I come over and we want to move band A, to the to stage three. If I type in stage three here in uh, sec cell B2 and hit enter, you'll notice that band A has now moved and is over starting there. Let's say we want to move the start time of band A to say 2 p.m. As I type that in and uh, do let's say they're going till 3 p.m. Uh, you'll notice it fills it in from 2 p.m all the way to 3 p.m. Uh, band A is now going to be on stage 3. Uh, so let's show you how we go about making that. Now first and foremost um, you want to have your uh, band data um, and your start and stop times uh, done with a time format and uh, you can do that in Excel by just changing your number format. Typically you can just enter 1 colon 05 space p.m. and it will recognize that those are time formats. Then over on the right what I have is I have the stage numbers here and then I have the time of the afternoon uh, going along the top now now uh, over in our Gantt chart area what we're finally gonna have at the end of what we're doing is we're gonna have three values over here we're either gonna have text um, so for instance band A starts on uh, stage 4 at 105 so right here stage 4 at 105 this will say band A um, over on the left since no one at 1 o'clock is actually scheduled this will have a zero in it and then since band A is going from 105 to 140 um, from 110 through 140 we will enter in a lot of ones so what your final data will look like is something like this and we have band A and you have zero now we can go along and do this all manually and then create conditional formatting rules on top of this uh, that will change and create fills and hide and mask some of these numbers um, but I don't want to sit this is just as bad as the merge formula so I don't want to do any of this manually we're gonna create some formulas that will fill that in for us and the formula we created is a uh, what's called an array formula and you notice it's got these curly brackets at the front and the back of the formula now, um, those for, those uh, curly brackets are not entered by you. So see if I click in here, you'll notice they go away. I'm going to hit escape and they're back. Um, to get those curly brackets in there, what we need to do is after we're done with our formula, we need to hold Control, Shift, and hit the Enter button, and that will make this an array formula. What that does is that allows um, Excel to capture values for different ranges and check it against uh, the values that we have um, because we do have some conditional operators that we can only do with an array formula otherwise we get a not applicable when trying to run this formula as, not as an array formula uh, so let's dive a little bit more in how this formula works so uh, what we're first doing is we're gonna check and see um, uh, is there a match and to do the match we are using the sum product formula and that's gonna say is there a match on F2 which is the stage number is there a match in the corresponding column of B2 through B6? And uh, lo and behold, there is a match, um, and it's four down. One, two, three, four. There's number one. And it's saying, hey, let's multiply that um, times G1, which is our current time in our table. And we're going to check and see if that is greater than or equal to the start time. That's over here in column C. 
and we're going to multiply that times g1, which is once again 1 o'clock, and we're going to see it's if it also is less than or equal to the same corresponding value in column D. So let's look at what this is doing. So uh, what these checks are doing, what some product does um, right now since we've put these in as a checking of values, we're saying anytime F2 equals B6, either return back um, if it's true or false. Same thing with G1, if it's greater than or equal to any values in C2 through C6, return a uh, true or false. And then finally, uh, if it's less than or equal to the end time, return a true or false. We're going to take each one of these groupings of true and false, and we're going to multiply them together. When we multiply them together, Excel says uh, false is a 0 and true is a 1. And so this will either return a 0 or a 1. And we're going to check that and say, we want to know, is this equal to 1? Therefore, it means it is true. It means we have a match of someone is on stage at 1 o'clock. Now, we're also combining this with a, a, um, a couple of other formulas. Uh, we're saying, uh, um, since this is an AND, it's our um, original logical function of, of our if statement, this logical test, we're saying AND, we need both of these things to be true. Not only do we need um, someone to be on stage at this exact time, um, we also are saying uh, this OR statement here of is uh, if two cells over, is that blank? And also is... Um, one cell over, is that equal to zero? Um, why we're doing this is this is going to tell us if we're over on the far left of the chart um, and also if we are now at the start of a new band starting um, or are we in the middle of a band that's just uh, playing for a long time, you know, more than five minutes. Now, if all of this is true, we're going to say, I want you to go out and find um, the name of the band. We are using a combination of index and match to say, Go out to A6 and find the name that matches. Um, and this is why we need that to make this an array formula. Because we're, multi we're matching on multiple criteria. We're not just matching on one column like the stage. It has to be a combination of the stage and start and end time. Um, so we're saying return that. And this is why we need to create the array formula. We're checking G1 is equal to C2 through C6. Uh, because once again, this is the very start of their band time. And uh, we're also going to make sure uh, that F2, which is the stage, is the correct stage. If all of that matches, then go ahead and return the band name here. Um, finally, if uh, it is not the beginning of the band starting session, then let's just go ahead and repeat that formula that we had up above, which says, hey, let's go ahead and see if anyone is on stage right now. So this should return a 1. Um, for us, and uh, we'll go ahead and see how that looks here in a second. So I'm going to go ahead and do um, Control Shift Enter and enter that as an array formula. If you really want to see what this formula is doing, um, I recommend you go up to your formulas ribbon, click on the evaluate formula, and click through the evaluation, and you can see those falses and trues that I mentioned that it's Excel is putting in in our sum product. And you can see exactly what the formula is doing in more detail. Um, it just might take too long to explain in this short video. So we ha uh, once we have our uh, array formula entered, what we want to do is then just copy it across all of our columns. You notice band D is in there now, and we've got a lot of ones over here. Um, and then if I just go ahead and copy that same range all the way down, my array formula, if you notice, if I click anywhere in here, it's an array formula because I've copied that all the way across. Now, as you can see, uh, band E is starting at 1.30, and that is 1.30 on stage 2, and there's band E starting at 1.30 on stage 2. And so our first part of the IF formula is true, and it is saying that, you know what, this is actually the start of a performance. Let's go find the name of the band and put that in there. Um, and then just to the left of that, no one is playing at this time. So uh, what that ends up doing is that ends up becoming false, and therefore it goes into the second sum product, which also returns a zero because no one's playing on stage there. And then finally, over on uh, 1.35 p.m., uh, the if statement is going to come back and say that uh, this is false because it is not the start of a band time. So it's going to go right to the second sum product formula, and it's just going to return, is anyone playing here? by multiplying out this uh, um, conditional statement here, and uh, the final values will either be a 1 or a 0. A 1 means that all of these matching in that 
F3 has a band plane, N1 uh, is greater than or equal to a start time, and N1 is less than or equal to an end time. Uh, and so then we have all of our data kind of laid out. It just doesn't look pretty yet. All right, so let's go ahead and take a look at our data and see what kind of conditional formatting we can apply on these. Um, so anytime it's a zero, we said that this is nobody's playing on the stage at this time. I just want to hide these zeros. And essentially, I'll make uh, the font color equal to white, which is our background color. And these will look like they've gone away. And then anytime we have text, what I want to do, um, this is the start of a band time. So I want uh, the text to be white. And I'm going to go ahead and put a top border, a left border, and a bottom border. Uh, and then a fill color equal to my stage, which is blue at this time. Uh, and then anytime there are ones um, over here and it is not next to a zero, I'm going to uh, go ahead and put in a top border, a bottom border, a light blue background fill color, and then I'm going to change the font color to equal that same background color so the ones go away. Uh, next, I'm also going to, if there is a one with a zero next to it, I'm going to put a top left, I'm sorry, top right and bottom border with the same fill color that we've done before and same text color um, so that the ones disappear. Let me show you how that works. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to highlight my range of con uh, for our conditional formatting Gantt chart. I'm going to go up to the conditional formatting button and I'm going to click on new rule. Now I'm doing this across the entire range because we're going to do it for the zeros. And so um, what you want to do is you want to click on use formula to determine which cells to format. And we're going to type in a formula here, and we're always going to make this our top leftmost cell. So this is going to say equals G2 is equal to 0. And if that is a true statement, which it now is, um, if for the zeros, I want to go ahead and format something, and I want to make the color of this white. And that should get rid of our zeros in there. Now, I can also uh, change this and probably put in a border um, color of white. Uh, and really force our borders to hide as well. And let's go ahead and click on OK and see what that looks like. So you notice now that uh, we have um, just our uh, non zero showing up. So we've got our, where our bands are playing and uh, how long they're playing for. So we're going to do each one of these rows individually because I want to set the color equal to our stage color over on the right. So I'm going to highlight that row. I'm going to go up to conditional formatting and do a new rule. I'm going to choose use a formula to determine which cells to format. And in this case, um, when it's equal to text, so anytime it's equal to uh, like band D, so I'm going to do equals G2 is, oops, equals is text of G2. Okay, so if G2 is text, then what we want to do is we want to format that where we want um, a top, a left, and a bottom border because it's our leftmost part of the bar. I'm going to change the font to white, and we're going to change the fill uh, to that uh, teal color that we have over there on the stage. And we're going to go ahead and click on OK. You can see what it's going to look like. And if I click on OK, you notice that band D now has a uh, uh, borders, and the color of it is white, and it's blue background. All right, let's go ahead and do any time it is a middle part of the bar. So we want to once again highlight this entire row. And we're going to go up to conditional formatting, do a new rule. So this is going to be a little bit more of a complex formula because what we need to check is we need to check um, is it in the middle? And how we're going to do that is we're going to check the number to the right. So um, if it's a 1 and the number to the right is also a 1, we know we're in the middle. So uh, we're going to go ahead and do an equals and we're going to do an and. And we're going to say um, first off if g2 is equal to 1. Um, or if we're going to do an offset, because we need to go over to the right one square, and so we're going to say if G2 um, is our starting point, and we don't uh, want to change our rows, but we do want to change our column to the right by one, and uh, we're going to grab a whole range of one by one. And so if we do that offset is equal to one, then we know we're somewhere in the middle. I can end my and and then go ahead and click on format. So since we know we're in the middle, our border, we need a border on the top, we need a border on the bottom. Our fill is going to be that color teal. And let's change our font just to make sure, and make sure our font hides all text in there. Let's click on OK and click on OK. You'll notice that anything in the middle is now gone. 
since we've been checking for that. Now uh, the last thing is um, if it is equal to a 1 and to the right is a 0, um, we should uh, be at the end. And so let's go ahead and highlight once again that entire row. Go up to conditional formatting, new rule. And we are going to go ahead and do our new rule, which is going to say equals. And, and we're going to say g2 is equal to a 1. And we're going to do that same offset formula. Offset where g2 is our starting point. We're not going to change our rows. We're going to go to the right by 1. And we're going to look for a range of a one by one range. If that is equal to a zero, then we know we're on the far right hand side. And let's change that format. And what we want to do is fill it with the same color. And since it's the far right of our bar, we're going to give it a top, a right, and a bottom. And our font, we want to be that same color to hide any value that we have in there. And you'll notice that it's gone away. It's put a border around our band. Um, and we just need to then repeat these same steps for each row. Um, so we'll go ahead and do the next one, and then we'll skip and show you the final formatting. But once again, um, so if you go to row two, conditional formatting, create a new row rule, use a formula, first and foremost equals if uh, is text. And this time it's G3 because we're one row down, and that's the top leftmost part of our range. And so if it is text, that's where we want to go ahead and fill it with this green color. We're going to do borders of top, left, and bottom. We're going to have a font color of white. And it uh, looks like we have it all. So let's go ahead and click on OK. And you can see band E has now got borders. And uh, um, so we're going to repeat the same other two steps by going to conditional formatting, new rule, use the formula. Once again, we want to say if G3. Uh, we're going to do an AND, I should say, where G3 is equal to a number 1, as well as an offset of G3. And we're going to go uh, no rows, but we're going to move one column over, and we're going to grab a range of a 1 by 1 cell. And uh, if that is all equal, then we know we're in the middle. And let's go ahead and do a fill of the green, a border of top and bottom. And the font we are going to hide with that green. Let's check out our formula again. We said, uh, oh, oops, if the offset uh, by going over the right is equal to 1, then we know we're in the middle. Let's click on OK. It has created our bar perfectly. Now let's highlight the range and do the final one for this row uh, by going conditional formatting, new rule, use the formula, equals, and, and we're going to do G3. Uh, is equal to 1. So now we're going to go to offset and we're going to say we're going to start in G3. We are going to go um, no rows down, one column to the right, and we want a 1 by 1 worksheet cell. And if that is equal to a 0, then we know all of this is true. And we therefore know we are over on the right hand side. And so we want a border, top, right, and bottom, and font of that green color. Click on OK and OK. And now you see uh, band E is ready to go. So if we go ahead and we go ahead and move band D down um, to uh, the stage two, if I type in two and hit enter, you'll notice that band D has now been moved. And I didn't have to do anything. We can move those pretty freely. And I can move band one up and it will shift it around um, as we need because Excel is calculating those values for us. Um, so. Uh, uh, you can take care of the other three ones to get the red and the orange and the purple. Uh, and that is a way that you can make a musical festival chart or any type of chart using conditional formatting um, and some Excel formulas so that you just have to enter in some data and your chart will fill itself out if you need to move things around. Once again, this is Steve Equals True at ExcelDashboardTemplates.com. Please subscribe to my video channel so you're sure to get the next post delivered directly to your inbox. And head on over to my blog because there's lots of other great tutorials that you might find interesting. Thank you.